What is going on, everyone? Good morning. Let's talk about OTAs. And it's minor, it's little, but us football fans, we love football. We know that the summer is a grind because all we wait for is August when preseason starts just because it's a little bit of a tease, even though we hate preseason and we just want September to be here. But before that all happens, you get some OTAs. You get some football talk. Adam Schefter gets going. Ian Rappaport gets going. There's stuff that's on NFL Network. Here's the start of it, OTAs, and the Eagles have some noise heading into OTAs. Some good noise, some bad noise. We'll start with the bad first, and Malcolm Jenkins is not in attendance for OTAs, and I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. I'm not going to say I'm truly devastated, because if you remember, before the Super Bowl season, Fletcher Cox didn't attend early stuff, and we started freaking out, how can a leader not be there? And, and look what the end result was, right? Malcolm Jenkins is obviously one of our biggest leaders, and Adam Schefter, at the end of his tweet, he, he put these words here, and it's simply just as easy as this to understand. Absence notable. Absence notable. Come on. We, we Everyone knows that Malcolm Jenkins is not there as one of the biggest leaders in this locker room. And at the age of 31 in the production, since 2014, he played 98% of our snaps. It's going to be figured out. Howie Roseman gets the job done for everyone. Howie Roseman is obviously going to figure out this contract situation. When you look at it, for next season, he is on salary for $8.1 million. His cap hit is $11.38 million. And for the following season, $7.6 million is his base salary. And when you average the two together in ninth highest paid safety in the league, and you take a look around the league at what other safeties are making, some free agent safeties, Malcolm Jenkins saying, dude, come on, you know, I, I I play how much, I do what for this team, I don't just play safety, I can play linebacker at times, I can play nickel corner, I mean, he can do everything, he literally is a jack of all trades out there, and he thinks he's worth more than what he's getting paid, and arguably so, so that's how it works, you sit out, and you, you communicate with Howie Roseman, it's just, it's odd that it would get to this level to begin with, knowing how Howie Roseman works, but we are at this level, and Malcolm Jenkins is making a statement that he's on happy with this contract and it's part of the business it's the business side you can't dive into this so much to the point where how Malcolm's going to ruin the locker room and Malcolm's going to do this and then come on what type of leader is that there's a business side to it and when you're involved on that side of the NFL you realize that you realize that so I don't think that's this situation is going to take away from how Malcolm Jenkins is with the locker room how people respect him how people look at him when you're inside the locker room honestly you might even give him more credit for sitting out because they're understanding the money side of it as well now it's not as simple as just go play just go be a leader you shut up you're getting paid a lot of money anyway uh, that's not how it works that's silly to think that way all right it's just silly so that is the bad news Malcolm Jenkins is not in attendance but I can't sit here and say I'm worried about it I can't sit here and say well that's going to be the difference maker in the season because I've seen it go the other way in recent years with Fletcher Cox so let's just say relax it's it's late May which I can't believe it's already late May the time is flying by I cannot believe it before you know it we are going to be talking about preseason which is kind of exciting but before you know it I, I never want to wish away the summer but I always want to at the same time because I want damn football to begin but anyway I want to know your thoughts on the Malcolm Jenkins situation because hey, listen the guy is is a difference maker he plays how many snaps it's crazy 98.4 percent of the snaps since 2014 when he got here in Philadelphia that is something insane so I want to know your thoughts on Malcolm Jenkins but I don't put too much into it it's all going to be worked out it's all going to be figured out and Howie Roseman is is a magician when it comes to the money aspect of of his job I need that coffee I need that coffee Let's move on to the good. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz with no limitations heading into OTAs. And if you remember, mid-April, stress fracture not fully healed was the quote we got. And I'm going to have to sit here and say, all right, well, the Eagles will not put him out there with no limitations if he wasn't ready. Let's be real. It's been a couple of years in a row where Carson Wentz has been injured. Now, I'm a Carson Wentz believer, and, and he's our guy moving forward, and I was always a Carson Wentz believer. 
So, I understand that his biggest knock is injuries, but this is a great step moving forward. To head into OTAs, to get out on the field, to not have that, well, I'm here, but there's a little bit of limitations, and I can't do this, but I can't do this with my teammates, and this I have to sit out for. No, no, no. It's let's go into the let's go into OTAs and let's make some things happen. Let's go into OTAs, feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about anything. Just go play football. Just go play football. You're not worried about well, you know, uh, this is happening. No, just everything's off the table at this point. Go out there, go through the motions, do what you do out there in OTAs. Get your feet going. Just, just go out there. Just go out there. I'm excited for Carson Wentz. This is obviously a, a big season for him. It's a big test for him. It's a big mental block. Football is obviously the insanely rough sport. Injuries are going to happen. That's football at the NFL level, all right? But knowing his past, he's going to have to to show that he will be able to stay healthy. That's just reality, as much as a Carson Wentz guy as I am. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see how he handles it because it's not easy but if there is someone who can get through that type of adversity it's Carson Wentz and I believe that his mental toughness will help him get through it I know Doug Peterson's pumped about it I love Doug Peterson I think him and Carson Wentz have a great connection together and what they're game planning now uh, they're they're really sparking something up together I'm, I'm truly st- just stoked about it. The restriction, the no restriction, is is actually exciting to me. Because what if, what if you heard, well, Carson Wentz is, is at OTAs, but he can't participate in everything. The Eagles would not allow him to go without any restrictions at this point. And that's a big sign. That's a big sign. Bounce back for Carson, baby. Bounce back for Carson. I think it's going to be something special. I think it's going to be something special. It's clear when you look at the Eagles and what they did this offseason. Look at the weapons. Look at the weapons. Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard. You still got Alshon Zacherts. Deshaun Jackson, a legitimate true threat, which Carson Wentz stated. (laughs) I don't know if I've really had one like Deshaun Jackson before. Beefing up the left tackle position. It was all about Carson. Give Carson the weapons. So that makes me really excited, and I'm pumped to see Carson Wentz. I want to know your thoughts on that. Last, real quick, just last, I put up a video about Chris Long and the way we handled the situation with Chris Long. I also remember putting up a video about how I did not like Howie Roseman's decision on what we did with Michael Bennett, right? I I was upset with the way we traded Michael Bennett and... It just didn't make much sense to me due to the fact that his production was still there. and At the time, the base salary was still a problem with the cap hit, and we didn't have much money yet, but I knew we could fix it. Whatever. It happened, right? But with this Chris Long thing and even the Michael Bennett thing, I would get crushed. I would get destroyed. Bro, you got to trust. You have to trust. Howie Roseman is the best, which I do agree, and I I live by that logic to an extent. But it's so funny to me with this fan base compared to, say, the Sixers or the Flyers or the Phillies. They always know what they're doing. And they want a Super Bowl, and I get that, so they get a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But with this fan base, every move, perfect, perfect. Well, there's a reason that happened. There's a reason that happened. There's no way there's not a reason because we're the Eagles and we get everything right. It's okay to be critical of some decisions. Not everything is absolutely perfect. Not everything is handled just with 100% certainty. You have to question some decisions. I personally did not like the way they handled both of those. I don't think it was right. But majority of this fan base is, dude, come on. When the Eagles make a move, dude, come on. That makes sense. You got to trust. They know what they're doing. That's always the argument. There's never criticism allowed. You can't disagree with a move that the Eagles make. Uh, But the Sixers, we shouldn't have traded Jimmy Butler. What? Why should we have traded Jimmy Butler? 
or traded for Jimmy Butler. We gave up too many draft picks. We gave up too many players. Why do we go get Tobias? That's allowed. Just because of the one Super Bowl win? I'm just throwing things out there. That's how I see it. It's it's just funny to me that with the Eagles fan base. Can't be critical. Let me know your thoughts on these topics down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.